Hello my sweet potatoes, it is Michelle back with another video and today I am finally sitting down and I'm just going to chat with you guys about my acne journey. I'm wearing no makeup right now because I am breaking out right now. If you have any negative comments to say about my skin, please keep them to yourself. It's a waste of your time and it's a waste of my time and not everyone's skin is perfect, like mine sure isn't. But today I just wanted to sit down and share my story from when I first started getting pimples all the way up to today telling you guys all of the things that I've done throughout the years all of the like medications skincare regimens all of that and hopefully this can help you out and maybe you can even help me out by leaving a comment below and if you could take anything away from this video if you have acne or not I just want to spread more awareness about acne and how acne is difficult it's kind of hard to understand how acne can affect someone so much physically, emotionally, and mentally, especially if you've never had really bad acne before. It can really mess with your self-confidence and your self-esteem. There's no one-size-fits-all solution for acne either, and you can't get rid of acne just by simply washing your face more often, as some people might tell you. Everyone's skin is different, and what worked for you might not work for someone else, and I wanted to just share my story and try to help others regain their confidence again, even with a full face of acne. So if you're new to my channel, my name is Michelle, and I'm a YouTuber from Hawaii. I hope you join me and my other sweet potatoes by hitting the subscribe button down below and turning on notifications but anyway this is probably going to be a very very long chatty video so grab a snack sit back relax and let us begin so let me first start off by saying that I have very oily sensitive skin I've had sensitive skin my entire life and I have hormonal cystic acne which I'm pretty sure I got it from genetics pretty much is what my current dermatologist told me so that is my situation but let me first start off with when I first started getting pimples back in fifth grade so yeah I started getting pimples in fifth grade when I was like 10 years old I'm 21 right now so I have been getting pimples for over half of my life and you would think that by now I would have found a solution to my acne but clearly not acne is just very difficult and you can do something to make it go away but a year later it can come back in full force anyway um, I had my first pimple in fifth grade but after elementary school um, my acne started to get a lot worse especially in seventh grade I got even more breakouts and most of my breakouts were on my forehead and the front of my cheeks I remember one time I was in PE class in seventh grade and a guy called out to me and I remember because I was so embarrassed but in front of the entire class he said hey pizza face I just wanted to shrink and hide because I was just so embarrassed I don't know why he said that I, I felt like it was so random but he just he just said that and I felt so self-conscious yeah so I, I did get bullied a little bit for my acne but luckily it was very rare but still I felt like I had the worst skin out of all of my friends and I would think what is wrong with me my mom was also concerned about my acne so she and I decided that I should go and see a dermatologist so I went to see this dermatologist and she told me to use this Neutrogena bar soap it was like an orange bar soap it was kind of translucent and she said just wash your face with this every single day I did that I followed her instructions after a few uses of that bar so my skin got even worse broke out even more in very inflamed very red angry looking pimples my skin was also extremely dry and my skin was flaking so badly I remember I was taking a test one day in seventh grade and I scratched my face and flakes were falling from my face like snow onto my test paper I was very very self-conscious about my acne growing up I was also just a very shy person growing up so having acne really didn't help anything I was pretty much the stereotypical nerd I had glasses I had braces and I had acne so I think I only visited this dermatologist like twice before I stopped going to her just the way that she spoke to me I felt like she didn't really care too much about me she wasn't really sensitive toward my feelings after that I started to use proactive so I heard a lot of mixed reviews about proactive but I decided to try it out anyway because because I was desperate um, so I tried it out and it actually worked pretty well for me so I started proactive in about eighth grade and I continued it into high school all of high school pretty much I didn't have 
that many problems with my acne. I think the proactive was maintaining my skin pretty well because I would get the occasional pimples and I did get cysts at this time too so if you don't know cysts are kind of different because cysts start way down beneath the surface of the skin and they take a really really long time to go away. Here's like the top layer of your skin the cyst starts like way down deep beneath your skin. That's the kind of acne that I typically had and it sucked because they would take a really long time to go away. I remember it would take like almost a month for it to fully flatten out. You can't see it but if you run your finger across the surface of your skin you will be able to feel the bump and then for me especially um, once the pimple is flattened out it'll leave a really dark spot on my face where the pimple was which is pretty much what all of these dots on my face are. They're all hyperpigmentation from past cysts. But I mean, all of my breakouts weren't too bad. Usually I would break out around uh, my period. So that's how I knew that my breakouts were hormonal. I know that a lot of people with hormonal acne tend to break out more on like their chin and their jaw area, but that is not the case for me. Most of my acne is on my cheeks. So I mean, I was pretty happy with my skin. Like I was getting breakouts, but it wasn't that often and that was totally fine. The thing that I was mostly concerned about was the hyperpigmentation, all of the dark spots that the pimples would leave on my face, but it wasn't that big of an issue. Another concern I had in high school was my large pores. So I had very large pores um, starting in high school and again I would like compare myself to my friends and, and see that they have very small pores and I wondered like why are my pores so big? But my dermatologist now told me that my pore size is genetic. So there wasn't really a lot that I could do about my pore size anyway. And another thing that I had an issue with in high school was redness. My cheeks would always be very red. It would look like I was blushing and my friends would always ask like why are you blushing and I'm like I'm not like that's just how my skin is and I didn't really know why. I should also mention that especially in high school I never really thought much about my diet. I kind of just ate whatever I want but I never ate like junk food. I never snacked a lot. I don't have a big sweet tooth. I never drank like sodas or sugary drinks. I would drink a lot of water. I got a lot of sleep. I would eat a lot of fruits and vegetables every single day so just without even thinking about it I would eat pretty well I would say. And I also never wore makeup like ever. I was never someone to really get into makeup. I never wore concealer, foundation, eyeliner, eyebrows, mascara, nothing. Not even lipstick. And then after high school I started college. My freshman year my acne was doing fine. I was still using the proactive but I noticed that at some point I was kind of breaking out a little bit more so I thought oh maybe the proactive kind of stopped working maybe you know my skin has gotten too used to it so that's when I decided I should maybe try something new acne free is pretty much exactly the same as proactive it's another three-step skincare system cleanser the toner and the treatment but it's cheaper and you can find it at the drugstore so I decided to try that out and again it was working pretty well for me I mean I still got the occasional breakouts uh, during the time of the month it didn't improve my acne but it didn't make it worse but then in the December 2014, this is where all of my trouble started. So, it was a week before finals week and I had one of the worst breakouts of my entire life. I noticed one day that my face had lit up bright red with all of these new cysts. I had like probably six new pimples and I was getting a new pimple probably every single day after that and I freaked out and it tore apart my self-esteem. After this, I did everything that I could to try and make the pimples go away faster. Like I never touched my face, I washed my face religiously using the acne free system as well as some other like spot treatments and things like that, home remedies. I changed my pillowcase every single day. I was just so insane going crazy trying to fix my skin. I did everything that I could, nothing really worked. It was like they were here to stay and they came in full force. At this point, I honestly felt ugly. I remember I would cry myself to sleep some nights because of how hideous I thought I looked. So I think looking back, the thing that caused this huge breakout, well, it was a number of things. The first thing is that I was extremely stressed at this time. It was right before finals week. Another thing was that I wasn't really drinking a lot of water. I wasn't exercising like at all. And then I think the biggest thing that might have caused this whole breakout is the fact that I was drinking milk tea, I kid you not, every single day for like three weeks. There was so much dairy and sugar in the milk tea. I remember that the 
cysts took forever. I want to say they took over a month to fully heal. So after that, the new semester started in January 2015 and I made some lifestyle changes. I started exercising regularly because I started taking an aerobics class that in turn, you know, made me drink more water. I was eating cleaner as well. I remember eating a lot of salads every single day, lots of fruits and vegetables, cut out as much sugar and dairy and junk food. Aerobics also helped me because it helped me to de-stress. I was still using the acne-free system religiously, but you know, I was still breaking out for some reason. So three months went by, I want to say April-ish, my skin still wasn't clearing up. So that's when I decided that I should probably seek professional help. So I actually just ended up going on Yelp and searching dermatologists near me and that's how I found out about my current dermatologist and he had a 5 star rating on Yelp with like 50, 60 reviews and literally everyone that reviewed him said that he helped them so much with their skin. Finally, sometime in May, I went in for my first appointment with him and he was so nice. He was very friendly and personable and he asked me questions about me to really get to know me and he genuinely seemed to care about me. And I also remember just like breaking down in tears in front of him because of how unconfident I was in my skin and how much I just wanted to have normal skin again and he understood that completely. So he examined my skin, asked me more questions about my acne and my history and things like that, and he decided to put me on minocycline. I did also ask about Accutane, but he said that, I mean, my acne was bad, but it wasn't so bad where I needed something as strong as Accutane. So he said that minocycline should be good enough for me. And in addition to minocycline, he also gave me a sulfur cleanser and the epidural gel. So my routine at this time was to take minocycline once a day, every day, at the same time, every day, wash my face with the sulfur cleanser day and night, and then following that, apply the epidural gel to my entire face. On this routine, I remember that my skin did get worse before it got better. So I think a month into it, I had even more breakouts. But after like two or three months, I think the effects started to show. So that tends to happen with acne and new medications and new skincare routines. For me, my skin definitely tends to get worse before it gets better and it's very discouraging at first because you think it's not working but really you just need to stick it out so it just takes time and by November that year November 2015 I was having just one pimple a month and I was so happy with this I went from getting new pimples every single day to one pimple a month I did still have a lot of hyperpigmentation a lot of really dark spots on my face but that was okay so I went in for another checkup my dermatologist said that he was going to switch up my medication he said that if I kept taking minocycline it might turn my skin gray or something and I didn't want that. He decided to stop the minocycline and instead put me on doxycycline and it should still help to control my acne. So I was doing the exact same thing but instead I was taking doxycycline once a day, still cleansing my face with the sulfur cleanser, applying the epidural gel and also I started using finacea but that was to help fade the dark spots a little faster. But I noticed that after a while of using finacea my skin would start to get really itchy so I I called my dermatologist and he said, you know, it's okay, you can just stop the finacea because the dark spots will fade on their own anyway. So I did that for the next like 10 months, I want to say, until like October 2016-ish. And looking back, ugh, summer 2016 was so good because my skin was the best that it had been since my initial breakout. But then around August 2016, I noticed that my skin was kind of breaking out again a little more than usual. I did stop taking the doxycycline for a while I want to say like two weeks because I kind of just forgot about it I don't know why I was really dumb and I asked my dermatologist if this would have any effect on my skin and he said no it shouldn't so after that I remembered like okay I need to start taking the doxycycline again so I did that and around October I called my dermatologist again for another checkup and said that you know my skin is still breaking out so they said you know what just stop the doxycycline and when you come in we'll figure out what to do from there so I went in for my appointment in November 2016, I started taking 50 milligrams of spironolactone. Starting November 2016, my new routine was to take spironolactone once a day, continue washing my face with the sulfur cleanser, and then instead of the epidural gel, use Axone. So I was doing this for a month, and then December 2016, <sighs> 
I had another major breakout. Huge, huge cysts. They look like warts or like boils on my face. And honestly, I really don't know why I broke out. Maybe it's because I switched up my medication and the spironolactone was like doing its thing, like purging my skin. This was my second time going through a really bad breakout like this, so I was kind of used to it in a way. I think it took another month before the cysts finally healed. It was also hard because I was starting a new position as director of marketing for my club and I was also an intern for Yelp. So both of these things, I was constantly meeting new people, talking in front of a large crowd of people. But then about April 2017, so like two months ago, I noticed that my skin was doing really well. I was still breaking out but not as much as before and the breakouts were much more manageable but I also felt like I wanted to try something new. This is when I started using Noxzema, stopped using the sulfur cleanser and instead my skincare routine was to use the spironolactone and cleanse my face with the Noxzema. I follow that with a apple cider vinegar toner. I use the Axone gel after the toner and if you saw my April favorites video which I will link up here if you want to see it. I mentioned these products in that video. I would also use aloe vera as my moisturizer so I would just get my plants and get the gel and use that and I kind of stopped using that I don't know sometime in May because it was just too tedious. I feel like I should maybe start using it again. I remember like in May my skin was doing so well and it was great because it was just in time for graduation and I remember on graduation I had no active pimples whatsoever so I was like thank Goodness! And I went back in one week after graduation. I got another pimple and it was this right here. So I went in and I said, you know my skin has been doing pretty well. I am breaking out a little bit again. He said, you know what, maybe we can increase your dosage of spironolactone from 50 milligrams to 100 milligrams. And I said, let's do it. And I did a lot of research before going on the spironolactone and saw that most people take 100 milligrams of spironolactone but I was first put on 50 milligrams. So I started taking 100 milligrams of spironolactone on May 22nd, not even a month ago. So that is really the only thing that I changed. So as of today, my routine is to take 100 milligrams of spironolactone every single day and my skincare routine day and night is the exact same. So what I do is use the Noxzema, then I tone my face with an apple cider vinegar toner. After that, apply the Axone gel all over my face. And I might start using the aloe vera just to see again like how it might affect my skin. And every now and then I will use my spin brush on days where I feel like I need a little more exfoliation. But I started breaking out a little bit less than a week ago. I got some new friends on my face. This guy has taken a while to go away but it's finally kind of flattened out. So let me show you what my skin currently looks like. I have very large pores but it's pretty much due to genetics so there's not a lot that I can do about it right now. So I have some redness right here. This area of my face is where I usually break out. So I have four cysts right now. I have one here, this large one, and then I have two right over here. And there's one right over here as well. Don't have a lot of issues on my chin as a lot of people with hormonal acne tend to have. And my forehead, besides this little guy, I do have some like little bumps, but I think that's because I've been wearing hats. Yeah, that is my skin right now, but honestly, it's not that bad. So that is my skin right now. I mean, it's not the worst, it's also not the best but you know, I'm learning to live with it. And I think that I got these few breakouts because I increased the dosage to the, sp the spironolactone. That's what I'm thinking. It also could be because I haven't really been watching my diet. I've been eating a bit more sugar and junk food and I've been drinking more. So I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to watch my diet and I'm also trying to cut out as much dairy and sugar as much as possible. I've been doing a lot of research and I saw that a lot of people said that cutting out dairy and sugar really helped their hormonal acne. So I'm going to try that as well and see if it has any major results so that pretty much brings me to the end of my video thank you guys so much for watching and if you stayed till the end of this video thank you so much for listening to me ramble on and I really hope at least 
one person found this video helpful in some way and if you are someone who is going through an acne breakout or something remember that it takes time and if you ever feel like you're alone you really aren't I know exactly how you feel because I've gone through it myself people might call you ugly you might say that you're hideous I've gotten lots of comments like that especially here on YouTube but you know I've been learning to ignore those types of comments because I know me I know I'm not ugly I know that I am beautiful even with acne and pimples and redness and scars and dark spots and all that stuff and so are you if you have perfect skin then you know I'm happy for you but I'm even more happy for people who have a full face of pimples struggled with acne for years and years or just started getting acne and they are finding the confidence to still you know go out every day and they don't let acne define who they are those are the people that I am proud of and I'm still learning to do that myself so hopefully we can just help each other out with that and help each other learn and grow and feel more confident in the skin that we're in and I hope that you will stick by my side on this journey to clear skin by pressing the subscribe button and keeping up with my videos you can find me on my social media all that stuff but thank you guys so much for watching I cannot express how much I appreciate your kind words and your support remember to stay confident and I will see you in my next video bye